In this session, we're talking about teaching the lesson, part four. We're using Salvation by Grace, the second lesson in, in level one, to illustrate how to make your studies interactive and how to use the material a little more effectively. If you'll use this model, it's just a model, use this model in all your lessons, you'll find that people will be discovering for themselves the truth about the Word of God rather than you preaching at them. Okay, so we're going to talk today about salvation by grace, verses 13 and 14, and we'll conclude this lesson. Get the person to read the scripture out loud. In this instance, it's Luke chapter 18 and verse 13. It says this, And the public, publican, the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Now, question number one is this. Notice the body language of this tax collector. First of all, where was he standing? And, and get them to look at that verse, and the verse says the publican was standing afar off. And then ask him, why do you think he was standing afar off? Earlier in the parable, it said that he went to the temple. How come he didn't go all the way into the church? Why didn't he go all the way into the temple? And almost immediately, everybody will say, well, he must have felt ashamed. He knew he's a sinner. All the things he'd been doing. That's exactly right. And you know, when people get the answer right, you want to compliment them. You want to build them up. That's exactly right. Have you been studying the Bible? Have you studied the Bible before? You always want to build people up as, as they give you the correct answer. Then we want to look at the facial expression of this tax collector and you ask him, what about the facial expression here? What, what was he doing with his face? And get them to read the verse until they come up with the answer that he wouldn't even lift up his face. He wouldn't lift up his eyes towards heaven. He looked down. And then you could ask him, why do you think he looked down? Why wouldn't he look up into heaven? And again, they would say, well, he was ashamed. And then I would give, I always try to bring an illustration in if I can. You know, like I told my children when they were young, mom was cooking some chocolate chip cookies and I told them not to get in the cookies that we're going to go to the store. We'll be back in a little bit. When I came back, part of the cookies were gone. Vicki, did you get into the cookies? No, dad. But she wouldn't look me in the face. She hung her head when she said that. Vita, did you get into the cookies? No, dad. But she hung her face. She wouldn't look at me when she said that. You can tell by a facial expression a person is carrying guilt. And so try to illustrate these things. They wouldn't, he wouldn't even look up into heaven. He was so ashamed of his life and the things that he had done. And then the next question is, why, would, why was he hitting himself, beating himself on the breast? Did, was he Tarzan? Did he think he was Tarzan? No. And let them just answer whatever they want to answer. And then just tell them, you know, many times hitting yourself upon the breast or tearing your clothes was a sign of repentance, a sign of a contrite, a humble heart before God. This man was broken. And then he prayed his prayer that was quite a bit different than the religious person's prayer. The religious person's prayer was, God, I thank you. I'm not like other men. I'm not a sinner. But this man knew he was a sinner. His whole body language carried his guilt and sin and condemnation. And he wouldn't look up. And then he prayed his prayer. God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. You know, and you really want to illustrate that too. When you, when you ask the person, then they might say, well, he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And come right behind him and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You might even get on the floor and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. This man was so broken. He got on his knees and cried, God, be merciful to me, I'm a sinner. And then ask him to read the next part of the verse. It says this, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, and I ask people, do you know what that means? Most always people don't know what that means. So I try to tell them, look, that word justified means, and I try to tell it in as many ways as I can. That means forgiven, cleansed, made righteous, just as if you'd never sinned. 
Just don't give one definition to your terms. Try to clarify something until it's so clear they can't miss the point. This man went down cleansed, forgiven, just as he had never sinned, just as if he had never sinned, made righteous. And then ask them, which man was that? And get them to look at the verses and they'll say, well, it was the tax collector. It was the publican. That's exactly right. Now, here's the whole point. You might say, well, why was this man forgiven and not the other? And then ask him to read the rest of verse 14 out loud. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased. He that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Out of those two men, which one humbled himself and which man exalted himself? Well, see, it was that religious person that exalted himself. I'm not, I'm not a sinner. I'm not like other men. I don't do this. I don't do that. But, this, but the tax collector knew he was a sinful man. He humbled himself. And God says, everyone that humbles himself, God will raise up. And then here's the real question. Sally, Johnny, tonight, if you would get down on your knees right now before God, and if you would cry out to God from your heart the way this man did, without being manipulated, without somebody putting pressure on you or trying to get you to repeat a little prayer or anything like that, but without any of that kind of pressure from your heart, would you tell God your condition as a sinner and call upon God for, your, for mercy? Do you think God will treat you the same way He treated this man in the Bible? And I've had him break out in tears saying, yes, God would treat me the same if I did that. I was in a hospital one day and a young man asked me to come and visit his aunt so I was up there with him and I started witnessing to her about Christ and I came and I even asked her if she would like to accept Christ and she said this, I don't know how to pray. And I said this, I said, do you know how to talk? She said, oh yeah, I know how to talk. Well, I said, just tell Jesus, just tell the Lord what you just told me. You told me you were a sinner, you needed His forgiveness, you needed a Savior. Why don't you just tell him that and I'll be a witness? You know, in her simple way, she looked up into heaven with her eyes and, God, I need to be saved. I need forgiveness of my sins. God, I need to be forgiven. I need your righteousness. I need you in my life. And you know what? She said it in her own words, in her own simple way. You see, there's really no instance in the Bible where, where anybody ever repeated a prayer after anybody. But we see in the Bible where people from their heart cried to God, where people without manipulation cried out to God, where people of their own initiative cried out and says, Men and brethren, tell me what to do to be saved. Not going through a formula, but going from their heart. And right now, my friend, if you from your heart cried out to God. God, I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. All through the Bible, it was said in different ways. This man said, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me when you enter your paradise. The Ethiopian eunuch said, here's water. What would keep me from being baptized? The men on the day of Pentecost said, men and brethren, what shall we do? It was all said in different ways, but it was all a response of the heart. If you right now humbled yourself and from your own heart cry out to God for His mercy, for His saving power to save you, the work's already been done. Will He treat you the way He treated this man in the Bible? And if they say no or I don't know, you have not presented the lesson correctly. But if they say, yes, he would do the same thing for me he did for this tax collector. You have taught this lesson correctly. God bless you as you teach and disciple the nations.